What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Varsity Overland channel. Today I am up in the northwestern woods of Massachusetts with my buddy Jeremy from AT4 Overland Bound. And obviously I'm wearing a poncho. We've got a lot of uh, canopy set up and the weather is not that great. So this is going to be a great test for our equipment. This is going to be a great test for my new gazelle tent. I did have a quick moment where I considered putting on my rooftop tent in case the uh, wind were to pick up tonight, but I decided, you know what, what better test of my new gear than in some poor conditions. Sometimes it's sunny in 75 and sometimes it's not. So the trail was muddy, the, uh, the clouds are over our heads, we've got constant rain on the forecast until about tomorrow morning, so stick around and see what happens to us. So like I said before, we found a spot in the northwestern woods of Massachusetts. Luckily, Jeremy's been here before. He used his Onyx Off-Road app. It's definitely an app that I'm gonna start to investigate myself. Stick to the end of the video. I'm gonna make sure that we don't uh, have any visitors through the course of the night. And if we don't, I will tell you the location because we are awfully close to this reservoir and I just want to make sure that it's a usable, appropriate campsite. I don't want to any, give anybody some bad information. Despite the rain, it is really nice out here. So there's a chance we could get some, some bad wind tonight. It'd be a great test for the gazelle. sunlight is almost non-existent at this point so I might have to continue filming in the morning wish us luck
All right, people. Well, it is morning, and I hardly slept last night. There were a couple, a couple key things going on in the tent and in the campsite that kind of prevented me from falling asleep. I learned a little bit about the gazelle tent. The uh, the walls like to cave in if the wind gets gets too strong. There's a couple straps that hang around the outside that will constantly knock up against the material of the tent if the wind is too strong. And uh, one of our other canopies that we were cooking under last night got ripped out of the ground and flew up, landed on top of this tent because of the wind. So normally I wouldn't leave any uh, awnings or any canopies open when I go to sleep. Um, but Jeremy had some service, some cell service with his phone and he was able to check the weather and the, uh, the wind wasn't supposed to be that bad, but I have an idea as to why it ended up being worse than we expected. So I'm going to get up, get, get dressed, got to clean up my tent and uh, I'll take the camera around the campsite so we can see what everything looks like. And I'll explain a little bit more when I do that. So what happened last night was the canopy that we had up right here, even though it was staked into the ground, there was a gust of wind that was so strong that it actually picked it up. It rolled over the top of my truck and then landed right over here between the truck and the gazelle tent. And one of the legs actually punctured the top of my rain fly, which led to a small puddle forming at the base of my air mattress last night from rain dropping down on top of me. Something else that kept happening was a big gust of wind would come and it would be so strong that it would actually push the tent inward and the wall would collapse. And I am not kidding when I say this probably happened two dozen times. So every time I hear, every time I would hear a large gust of wind, I would immediately start to uh, prepare myself to pop this wall back out, which is one of, the, one of the other reasons why I didn't sleep very well. Despite what the forecast said, predicting some light wind, I imagine we are at some form of elevation right now, so the wind might be stronger, and we chose to uh, park in this open area right next to the reservoir 
so we wouldn't have to worry about any branches or anything falling out of the trees and landing on the tents of the trucks. But because of this, there's a whole bunch of open space and the wind likes to kick up in this empty area and blow inward. And I kind of feel like that's what caused most of our trouble last night. Got to pick up all this garbage. This is not ours, by the way. We found it like this, but remember, uh, leave no trace. Got to pick up after yourself. Got to pick up after others. So yeah, we're breaking down camp a little bit, doing some filming with the drone and just walking around. Something else that I'm noticing right now is, uh, speaking of the rainfly with the gazelle tent, when I was setting it up last night, you have to pop up the entire tent before you can get the uh, rain fly on top. So if it's in a downpour and you pop your tent up and you don't get the rain fly on fast enough, the water just comes right through the screen that's on the top of the tent before you can get the rain fly on. Noticing little things about the gazelle tent here and there. I expect I'll have much more to say after I use it for a few more months. The flooring of the tent is not as waterproof as I thought. It definitely soaked up some of the moisture from the grass and the mud. If I was smart, I would have put down a tarp. So anybody that has a gazelle tent, I'd recommend putting down a tarp first before you deploy the tent itself. I would also highly recommend making use of the guy lines that come with your gazelle tent in the bag that has the stakes. These guy lines are what attach to the walls on the outside of the gazelle tent and uh, you can pull it right to the ground so that if there is a gust of wind it doesn't cause the wall to uh, cave in on you. I didn't think the wind would be bad enough to do that so I didn't bother and then of course at three in the morning or four in the morning when I keep having to reset the walls I'm kicking myself wishing that I had done it just packed up the gazelle tent and I am remembering one of the biggest issues that I had with ground tents in general back in the day when I used to use a ground tent all of the material gets very dirty so the bag is disgusting the inside of the tent when I was folding that up and trying to get it inside it's all covered in mud and rain and you know just dirt so the whole thing is a mess got myself all messy trying to put it away definitely gonna have to pop it open tomorrow when the sun's out let it dry try to clean it out I'll admit the maintenance right now the maintenance does feel like a lot more work than a rooftop tent. All right, people, well, that's gonna be it for today's video. 
We are out of the woods. We're back on pavement. Jeremy's uh, gonna air up his tires again. And I am not because I'm lazy and I never air it down. Um, but the trail was pretty good. I don't think it was 100% necessary. He just likes to be extra careful. So yeah, last night was an interesting night. The entire experience, I guess you could say, was, was interesting. As you might be able to hear, the wind has still not stopped. It is it has not died down yet. Um, overall, still had a good time. Still enjoyed ourselves. I hope that you could learn from some of our little mishaps, specifically my mishaps with the Gazelle Tent. And uh, yeah, I, I look forward to testing it further, the Gazelle Tent in, in different environments and different weather. Um, I will admit that there was a, a brief moment where I was missing my rooftop tent. Um, who knows how long I'll actually last before I, I put the eye camper back on the truck. I don't know. But we're about to head home, so uh, peace, people.